Welcome to Mass Transit Commute. Send is used to deliver messages to a specific receive endpoint on the broker, whereas Publish will use the message type to distribute itself to however many consumers are out there. Send is meant to go directly to a specific endpoint. So, for instance, I have a simple send here that's using our submit claim message and the same claim submission consumer. Uh, and in this point, I'm using the bus to get a send endpoint of the exchange. Now I'm using the bus because I'm not within a consumer. If I was within a consumer, I would use the consume context itself to get the send endpoint. It has those same methods on it. But because I'm not coming from an external application, I'm gonna call bus.getSendEndpoint and I'm gonna pass it that address. Addresses are always a URI and they can be a very short form, in this case, exchange colon claim submission. So when I run this, I'll be able to actually send that message to the exchange and it will be picked up by the consumer. You can see there's a send and a receive and all as well. Now, I could also send this directly to the queue and this is still going to go through the exchange, but by doing this, it's, it's a little more consistent with all the supported message brokers and it will send ultimately directly to the queue based on that name. And we'll see the result is the same, although under the covers, it's slightly different. And I'll get into that after we go through and see this. So the difference that we'll see here is that I'm actually sending to claim submission with bind equals true. And the bind is critical because it means that if the queue doesn't exist, it will create it. So that's something to think about as well. Um, where that can bite you though, is if I go back to the program and I, let's say that I want this to be a temporary consumer. So I want to set the endpoint dot temporary equals true. When I run this now, I will actually get an error when I try to send because what's going to happen is that there is a mismatch between the queue that's defined by the consumer and the queue that I'm sending to. And the difference is, is that the endpoint is temporary and I'm sending to what I expect to be a durable queue. Now, the URI syntax is pretty flexible and I can do things like put temporary equals true on here. And what that is going to do is it's going to set it to the same way as the receive endpoint goes. So now if we bring this up and load it, we'll see that when it runs, it should actually send to that queue. And you can see we sent to temporary equals true, bind is true and it was able to receive that. And you can actually see the receive is on claim submission question mark temporary is true. So when that receive endpoint is configured, it has that full send address as the input address in the app. So that's how we send to exchanges and queues. If we go and look at the broker, we can see that the queue was created. Well, where's the queue? No queue, great, awesome. Run it again. Oh, because it was temporary. <laughs> My bad. So let's take, make this not temporary. And we'll go back to the program and get rid of that. And now so when we run this, we will have that queue there. And we will see that the queue is there and it has the claim submission name. All good. But the exchange is still created for the message type. Now let's say that we don't want to publish this message and we don't want that message type on the broker. We can actually, when we configure this endpoint, we can specify that we want that endpoint not to configure its consume topology. And to do that, I'll actually have to create a consumer definition for it because I need to be able to access that um, consumer definition and that's gonna be a consumer definition for the claim submission consumer. And we're gonna override the configure property. And in here, we are just going to say endpoint configurator dot configure consume topology equals false. Now we're going to go to our program. We're going to add that definition. And now when we run this, we will see that the unexpected argument list, oh, we will see that the topic is not created because the consumer doesn't want to actually bind to it, so therefore it won't create it. And now you can see once the app started up and reset the broker, that topic is gone. And if we go and look at the queue in the exchange, there are no other bindings for it.
So we can then hide those types without having to have them as available for publish. So if we know we're going to send only and we know the address, we can force it so that we don't create those type bindings. So that's how you use send. Hopefully this was useful. Catch you next time.